I'm in the final stages of divorcing my wife of 23 years. I'll call her Connie. We married when I was 23 and she was 21. We met at college during my junior year and quickly became involved. We knew right away we would eventually marry and we did right after she graduated. I got a job with a company near where I grew up. My parents operated a working farm there with eight full-time and 45 seasonal workers. I grew up working on the farm, as did my brother, I'll call him Bill. Bill was three years my junior. He never went to college and instead worked as a laborer on the farm. Through the years, Dad tried giving Bill several management positions, but he just couldn't handle it. He just wanted to be a farm laborer, do his work and get paid. And so that's what he did his entire life until he passed away from cancer earlier this year. The farm has nearly 700 acres and three homes. My parents live in the main house, which sets back off the main road and is also where the farm office is located. My brother lived in the small carriage house out where the driveway meets the main road. My wife, kids, and I live in a farmhouse three quarters of a mile down the main road from my parents and brother. My parents bought this adjacent property through the business to expand the farm and preserve the farmhouse. All three homes belong to the Family Farm Corporation, and my brother and I lived in these homes rent-free. My parents are the only officers in the company. However, they set it up so that my brother and I would inherit the farm when they passed, with Bill to receive 45% and me getting 55%. I was awarded controlling interest as I helped them run the farm in addition to my day job. I was not paid for this work, however, we lived rent-free on the property and of course I would inherit majority ownership eventually. It was an ideal family environment and we all loved living there. My oldest child is a girl, 21, next is a boy, 20, another boy, 17, and our youngest is a girl, 15. Life was great for all of us. I had a very happy and loving marriage with Connie. Our kids were wonderful. My job was going well and the family farm was booming. I think I gave you enough background where you get the picture. Now let me get to the issue, which is the reason for my posting. About three years ago, my brother was diagnosed with cancer. He was never good about taking care of himself and didn't seek treatment until his symptoms became unbearable. By the time the cancer was discovered, it had spread to other areas of his body. He went through a terrible time with chemotherapy and radiation treatments. It really took a toll on him, but he continued working. Eventually, Bill passed away earlier this year and it was an emotional time for all of us, especially me. Bill looked up to me as his idol and I helped him through a number of life problems he had over the years. Bill's existence consisted of going to work, then spending the rest of his time at the bars and social clubs in town. He had a drinking problem, which I helped him conquer four years before he passed. He also had serious tax problems, which I helped him resolve. He just was the kind of person who struggled with life's basic tasks, and I was always there to rescue him. As a result of this, he and I were very close. My wife and kids loved him too, but they all thought of him as Crazy Uncle Bill. He was by no means dumb or lazy, he just had no ambition or desire to improve himself. Over the years, Bill had a number of girlfriends, but nothing lasted. Most of them were women he met at the bars. He did date a nice girl once, and I really thought it was going to go somewhere, but she eventually left him due to his drinking. My parents just accepted Bill for who he was and didn't pressure him. They loved him unconditionally, just like they loved me. In his will, Bill named me the executor of his estate and specified I was to receive 100% of all his assets, which included a life insurance policy, a small checking account, and his personal possessions like his motorcycle and truck. Then about two weeks after his funeral, I was over at Bill's place paying bills and looking through piles of paperwork he had stacked on his kitchen table. It was there I came across a statement from an out-of-town bank. The account balance was in excess of $70,000. I was shocked at the amount, but what shocked me even more were the legal names on the statement. The account was in Bill's name, 
with my youngest son, who I'll call Joe, listed as the payable on death beneficiary. Reading this, I was perplexed. I asked myself why would my brother set up an account this way, and why would he list only Joe as the beneficiary? He was no closer to Joe than any of my other kids. In fact, if anything, Bill was closer to the rest of my kids than he was to Joe. My mind started racing, but I couldn't come up with anything. I was going to call my wife and parents and tell them, but then decided not to just yet. The next day, I drove to the bank. Being the executor, I was able to find out that Bill opened the money market account a month after Joe was born and made regular contributions to it every two weeks. At this point, my mind zeroed in that there had to be some connection between Bill and Joe and then wondered, did Bill and Connie have an affair? Was Joe Bill's son? It started driving me crazy. That night, I went back to Bill's house and started going through his files trying to find something that would give me a clue. I spent hours coming through everything in the house. Then I found it, something that changed my life forever. It was two old photos of my wife. In one she was topless, and in the other, she was holding a beer wearing nothing at all. Both photos were taken in Bill's bedroom. My world crumbled. I stayed at Bill's house for several more hours that night going between crying and being angry. Eventually, Connie called and asked what I was doing, so I went home. I didn't confront her then as I had to think through what I wanted to do. I actually thought of just ignoring what I found. After all, the pics were from years ago, and my brother was no longer alive. I quickly shot that down as I knew I could never live with myself knowing what I knew. What I decided to do first was to tell my parents what I had found, and that's what I did the following day. I took the afternoon off and met with them at the farm office. I showed them the bank account and then showed them the pictures of my wife. My parents couldn't believe it. They were both upset and disgusted by the discovery. They knew exactly what this meant and it seemed to impact them as much as me. They asked me what I was going to do. I told them I planned to confront Connie, and if it was true, I would divorce her. They understood, but my mom encouraged me to hear her out and think it through before acting. That evening after dinner, I took Connie over to Bill's house with me. She thought she was going there to help me clean and get rid of things. When we walked through the door, I sat her down and said there's something we need to discuss. I then went to retrieve a packet containing the bank statement and photos of her. I first handed her the bank account statement. She looked at it and just said, wow, she couldn't believe Bill had saved so much money. I asked if she noticed anything odd about the statement, and she said no, just the amount. I then asked her to read the entire statement out loud starting at the top. She read the bank's name and address and then read Bill's name followed by the payable on death to Joe our last name. When she read this, she looked up at me with a look on her face signaling shock. I think she knew right then she was busted. She said, I wonder why Bill did this. I asked her if there was something she wanted to tell me, and she said no, shaking her head from side to side. I said, are you sure? And she said yes. I said okay. I then pulled out the photos and handed them to her. She immediately froze, and the tears started flowing from her eyes. She said, let me explain. And I told her, please do. She excused herself while she went in the bathroom, and I heard her in there regurgitating. She came out 15 minutes later and came clean about the affair she had with Bill 18 years ago. She said that it was stupid and selfish, claiming it only lasted a couple weeks. Connie said she quickly realized what she had done and ended it. She claimed since that time, she had distanced herself from Bill, interacting with him only when other family is around. I then asked her if Joe was Bill's son. She said no, he was definitely mine. I asked her how she was so sure. She said she knew he was, and then said even if he wasn't, he was because I raised him. I told her not to go there as this has nothing to do with my relationship with Joe, but has everything to do with her relationship with Bill. She cried harder and begged for my forgiveness, but I showed her no empathy and didn't comfort her in any way. 
Instead, I just got up to leave. I told her not to come home until she settled down and cleaned herself up as I didn't want our kids to see her like this. I went home, and she came home about an hour later. She kept asking me to talk. I told her there would be time to do so later. We slept in the same bed that night, and she tried snuggling with me, but I refused her and turned on my side. She cried in silence for most of the night without sleeping. The following day, I took paid time off and went up to the main house to meet with mom and dad. I told them about Connie's confession, and they again were in complete disbelief. I next confirmed I would be divorcing Connie. My mom asked if that's what I really wanted, and I said no, I didn't want this. But after finding out what she had done, I would never trust her again and would never touch her again. After meeting with them, I went back home and told Connie I would be filing for divorce. Connie actually broke down and begged me, saying this all happened so long ago, and that she knew Joe was my son. She just knew it. I again told her Joe has nothing to do with this, and my love for him will not change regardless of who his biological father is. I told her this was about she and I, and that she betrayed me in the worst way. I told her I didn't care if it happened 18 years ago or 1800 years ago. That afternoon, I met with the attorney we use for the farm. He recommended a divorce attorney who was a good friend of his. I got an appointment that afternoon and started the process. Since the farm and the three houses were all part of the corporation, they were not in any Jew party in the settlement. However, the attorney explained that the rest of our assets would be split 50-50 even with infidelity. He also explained since my wife has never worked outside the house, I would likely be required to pay spousal support for at least five years, possibly more. He said we would fight this in court, but based on similar clients he represented in past cases, that was the likely outcome. I expected and was prepared for this. Money wasn't a top concern of mine, I just wanted out of the marriage. I went home and told Connie, and she became totally unhinged. She cried and pleaded for a second chance, but I kept telling her no. I then told her I would be talking to the kids that weekend. I said I would first talk to Joe, then meet with the rest of the kids all together with Joe and tell them. She asked if she could be part of the meetings, but I told her no, that she could meet with them after I did if she wanted. Saturday morning came and I told Joe there was something I needed to talk to him about. We walked over to the creek on the farm where we have a pavilion and picnic benches. It was there I told him the news. He was crushed as you would expect and was very worried. He asked me if he was not my son, would I still love him? I told him of course I would. I told him to not even think of that as regardless, if he or any of his siblings were not mine biologically, my relationship with them would not change. I explained that this was something between his mother and I, that he and his siblings were not at fault. I then explained that I would be divorcing her, again reiterating that it was 100% a result of the affair with Uncle Bill and had nothing to do with him. We sat out there for a couple hours just talking. I told him the next step was to meet with his siblings when he was ready. He asked if he could have some time to prepare. I told him sure and to take all the time he needed as I wanted him to be comfortable with everything. We went back to the house and acted like everything was normal. But my wife was not herself and my kids immediately recognized it. We spent most of the afternoon lounging poolside, playing cornhole, and tossing the frisbee. It was just a normal summer weekend for us, except for the dark secret that was about to be revealed. After dinner, Joe came to me and said he was ready to talk with his brothers and sisters. However, they all had plans that evening with their friends, so we decided to do it the next morning. We all got up the next morning, ate breakfast, and headed to Sunday services as a family like we normally did. After church, we went home and I told the kids I needed to speak with them privately out on the back patio. My daughter asked if mom would be joining us and I told her not now, but she would be meeting with you all later. This immediately put the kids on edge. I broke the news to them. It was hard seeing their faces. They reacted how you would expect, with disbelief, 
followed by anger, and then sorrow. I then told them that I would be divorcing their mom, and they all started crying. We talked at length after that, and in the end, they understood my decision. My daughter said she hated her mother and wanted nothing to do with her. I told each of them that they are all young adults and they need to process this how they choose, but I told them to hear their mother out and not to judge her by this one thing. I told them to judge her by their entire relationship, which has been very good. They all agreed, but were very angry, and none of them wanted to meet with her right after. I told them I wanted to get DNA tests for each of them. I explained that their mom said she was only with Uncle Bill for a short time. But I wanted the test for my own peace of mind and for the truth. I reassured them that if it did turn out that any of them were not my biological children, it wouldn't matter as they all were legally mine, and I'd love them all the same, even if it turned out one or more of them is not mine biologically. Later that evening, their mom met with them in the dining room. It was very emotional. I was outside when this went on, but could hear some of the conversation. In the end, the kids all told their mother they loved her, but they would never see her the same way and likely would never forgive what she did to me and our family. For my wife, hearing this was devastating, but she deserved it. From that night, right through our divorce, my wife slept in the guest room. The divorce took nearly eight months to complete. During this time, my wife pleaded with me daily to stay together and to go to marriage counseling, but I didn't budge. Three months after D-Day, my parents got an offer from a developer to buy the house my family lived in and the surrounding 80 acres for an ungodly amount of money. My parents and I made a business decision and accepted the offer. My wife, two youngest kids, and I moved out 60 days later. It was at that time my wife moved into a three-bedroom apartment in town. This is when the reality of everything hit her hard. She became depressed to the point where she had to be put on multiple medications. I moved back into my parents' home temporarily. It was then I decided to build my dream house on the backside of the farm. This was something I wanted to do for a while, and this was the opportunity to make it happen. I designed the house with the architect, a mid-sized log cabin with three bedrooms. The house is now complete, and I live there with my two youngest kids. They also spend a couple nights a week with their mom. My ex is still very depressed, but getting better. She wants to get back together, but I have no interest. I treat her with respect, like someone I feel obligated to, but I have no feelings for her at all. It's really strange how discovering the affair turned off my love for her like a light switch. We still talk daily, but I try to limit the conversations to our kids. She doesn't have anyone here except for our family, so I can't just cut her off completely. Again, I feel a sense of obligation to her. Regarding the DNA test, as it turned out, all of my kids are biologically mine. All the drama and sleepless nights were for nothing, but I had to know. Learning this didn't change how I felt about Connie, though. She betrayed me in the worst way, and I will never forget or completely forgive her. I still, for the life of me, don't know why Bill set up that account with Joe as the beneficiary. My ex swears they never discuss paternity, and in this I believe her. I guess Bill just guessed, or possibly wished Joe was his. Overall, I feel good about where I am now and the relationship I have with my kids and my ex-wife. Though I'll never trust her again, I do care about her and want her to live a happy life. I don't know why I decided to post this, but writing it out made me feel better and made me even more appreciative of how everything turned out. If you made it this far, thanks for reading my story and good luck to you all. OP. Thank you for watching. Like, Comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Until next time, I'll see you again. Take care.